All right, with a lot of setup and a lot of thought. This is um, Mission Gold, Mission Gold Class Watercolor. Um, Magello is another name that I saw here. Mission Gold Class Watercolor 36, Magello Company. This is Korean artist watercolors under this label here it's made in korea so this was the set that came with a palette and this is the palette these are the boxes and then this is the palette and i have extra paint because i'm doing the uh, <laughs> collect blue paint so i have extras of mission gold paint that i got and what i'm going to do is try to figure out how to get it into this um palette configuration with my my own full pans that was you know this is a whole thing in itself hi Juana I see you thanks for joining um, I've got to get some swatches done of the colors and so um, I'm just gonna go for it this configuration pan I have no idea what I'm gonna do yet but what I would like to do is get some swatches and I don't know if I can do all 36 in one video because that'd be awfully long so I think maybe we can get through at least nine of the colors I would hope so I've set this up um, these are my swatch cards and I followed someone that I found online I can't remember who it was otherwise I'll tell you when I when I figure it out I'll tell you um, and I started off this way so I started off making the cards the way that person had made them. So you have a name, um, <clears throat> a color name. I put um, what company it is. You do the the um, saturation as it gets bright, um, lighter, and then opaqueness, and then some. What does it look like? Full strength, and then the um, the pigment recipe that you can find on your tube most times so this is my normal and I have well, I've swatched old tubes new tubes whatever so I've swatched out the paint this way I forgot to do you know transparency part way through so you know you get too excited and sometimes you mess up but this is what my normal swatch card looks like so I thought and this, you know, this makes it really handy. So when you're looking for a certain color, you lay these all out. Um, I think the sample that I saw, the person cut them apart and then put all the greens together, all the browns together, all the yellows together. And you can see how far I've gotten with that. Um, so a lot of times I find it's easy for me to lay these out and look at the differences in vibrancies, etc. So striations. And you can see how this has how the bait how the uh, pigment behaves so this is my normal card so what I did was I made um, M gram paint beautiful I'll tell you um, this is Saint Léa French paint this is their folder um, what I did was I made a few of those okay great took me all morning to figure this out then it get to painting already right instead of not not painting hi Deanna so I like to arrange my paints um, in the rainbow colors Roy G Biv red orange yellow green blue indigo violet I used to be a kindergarten teacher so you know I don't know maybe it's maybe it's a uh, past life of that so I have this let's get these open it's so cute because um mission this particular set comes with this palette not these little extras the boxes are nicely packed on this side um if you can find this on amazon for a good price then that is probably the way to go any other time any other place it's going to cost probably twice as much as what you can find it on amazon so let's go ahead with this um package these guys you know these guys have it made man they made sure that all the names were 
uh, out of the, the peekaboo hole here. Um, they're all seven mil uh, tubes and they're very clearly marked. So they say right on them, here's your light fastness button. It tells you whatever it needs to tell you. There's no little symbol, then you have to go turn around and look up the symbol kind of thing. I've had several of those where you have to, you have a little symbol, and then you're wondering, what is that little symbol? So it just tells you flat out. Here's your light fastness stars. Here's what it is. It's semi-transparent. Here it is. It's semi-staining. It's right there in your face. You don't even have to guess. So I love the, I love the labeling. I think that the package is pretty. You know, part of art supplies is give us some nice packages. We're artists, right? We want to see some pretty stuff. Okay, let's see. If I turn these around, then the words are upside down for you. Um, let me see in the video. I'm using this. Turn it over. Okay, hey, let's see what happens. You know, live video, that's what happens. Who knows? Let's start with Rose Matter. And I realize we're going to go to red to blue instead of red to orange. But oh well. This is the package that had some red. So let's put some Rose Matter down. So far, so good. Not too thick, not too thin. I just have a little tiny dot. Ha. Let's see if I guessed right or not. Um, I'm using a, a sable brush. It's, it's a brush that I found um, in the art store in Oregon. A couple dollars, literally. Because the name of the maker and so forth was scratched off or something. And they used it. They said it was um, defective. So great for me. Okay, here we go. That's pretty pretty. Let's add some more water. It looks like it's walking pretty well. Nice. Rose matter. I think there's some talk about um it's not being a light fast family or something. I don't think I have enough paint there to really put it on solid. Maybe the plan should be start there. I'm sure you can all hear this cat that's in the background there. They're just living, they chose us. They're living there for some free lunch. All right, there's one. Simple, quick. First one is Rose Matter. All right. Crim Crimson Lake. I think I've heard that this is sort of close to Alexarian Crimson. Oh, let's let the phone fall. <laughs> oh, hold on. Sorry. You know? I understand why people are afraid of live videos. You can't edit that out. Okay, so now we have Crimson Lake. Oh yeah, very close to Alizarian Crimson. It's a little pinker. Let's put the solid in first. I like the, the way it's dissolving. Let's get on the brush well. Mm-hmm. This one seems a little grainier than the other, but it's pretty. Okay, so since we've got that, let's pick that up. Yeah, see there's a little bit of green in there. Okay, by the third one I should have the feel down right, I hope. If not, then You'll have even more fun stuff to watch. There you go. So we pull it out. Put a little more water. That's what it looks like. Gold. All right. Crimson Lake. Not bad. Meanwhile, my pot of water here is. It's a really pretty pink. Okay. 
Bright Opera. All right. If you ever, ever had an opera paint, ooh, this one is um, definitely a bright, bright color. We have BV10 and PR122. So just reds and violet in this one. I thought maybe they put um, some fluorescent in it. Hi, if you're just joining. I see a cell. I can't see where my phone holder is. All right, we're swatching out Bright Opera. All right, here we go. Still in there. On the camera, it's almost looking orange. Um, on this side, let's see. Ooh. Very fluorescent, right? Really pink. If you do flamingo painting, you want to paint a flamingo, this might be the color for you. And I still don't have enough out there. So, there's lots of paint here, just not for what I want to do. I could still paint with that. It's making a picture. Okay, let's watch over the line. This one may be a little more opaque. The sticker says demi transparent, so and there you go as you go to light. You can see what's happening. Oops. <laughs> red violet. Let's try red violet. Oh, that one was already ready to explode. So I have a lot more paint on the palette than I want. Um, yes, Russell, watercolor, all watercolor. This one is um, Mission Gold. It's Korean artist quality watercolor. They have a student quality, and then this is the artist quality. Okay, so, oh, see, this is red violet. I was going to put this in my palette next to the um, reds, but I don't know now. Maybe I'll put it next to the purple. Right where they had it in the box. Okay. I washed the brush for no reason. So. Like I said, live video. You never know what you're going to get. As the presenter and as the guest. Oh. So this one. A little more particles moving there. Or less smooth on the top but you can see the change in the color you can go from light dark all right so there's the first four <clears throat> let's get to violet I'm trying to put them in the right spot up there okay bright clear violet sounds like purple right Maybe the oxidine purple type of color. Alright. And then we have pure magenta water going on up there. You can still see my purple in the screen. Oh yeah, this is definitely like a dioxidine. So I have a space for the words, another thing. Then this is the next. Um, next box. Very nice. This one is really smooth. Um, seems to be coming along with the brush pre pretty predictable. Unlike some of them that kind of spread out. Kind of wonder where the color all went. Okay. There you go. That one was bright clear violet. Okay. Into the blues. Normally I would stop and I would change my water. Um, but I don't want you waiting for me to come back. And I didn't bring two water dishes like I normally do. Cerulean blue. I hear a lot of um, different thoughts on cerulean blue that what you're buying is not real cerulean. So cerulean is um, one of those colors that 
evidently has an interesting history to it. And the element for it is not easy to find. To me, it looks like phthalo blue. Um, performs like phthalo blue. Most ceruleans I've had are very opaque and also really hard to even get on your brush. And you sit there forever trying to get the paint on your brush. Sorry, I was blocking the way. Okay, so let's see what we can do here to get it lighter. Here we go. Dark to light. And that turned all the water, of course. What? Mmm, purple. <laughs> okay. From there, cobalt blue one. Cobalt blue one. So, a um, friend of mine, before I bought these, you know, advised me, oh, yeah, Lisa, these are really bright colors, really bright. So, she had said she particularly liked the greens, and the rest of the colors for her, she said, were, were rather bright. And I thought, well, you know, I like bright colors, so why not? I'll go for it, even if it is... Um, I don't know, maybe more illustrator quality, I guess, for brightness. I mean, I live in Hawaii, so everything here is bright. We're used to bright colors. We have bright flowers. Um, these colors are from Korea, if you've ever seen Korean flowers and Korean clothing. Um, Manti is Korean. And um, if you've ever seen their things, traditional Korean um, clothing and so forth. It's very bright. So I imagine that they are mimicking and making colors of their country. You know, Old Holland, I'm sure, makes colors of Holland. It's sort of unfair because I'm putting colored water in here. So let's hope that all that works out. I don't have a clear path to get more water. Peacock blue. Never seen this one. I'm excited to see this one. So maybe I can use this in my oceans, right? I imagine it's going to be sort of Prussian, sort of teal, sort of turquoise blue. So let's see what we have here. Nice. Yeah, see it's kind of a teal, turquoise blue maybe? And what you'd find in other brands. So let's get this last square here. Yeah, turquoise blue, I think. This one is peacock blue. I think they have a turquoise blue, so that's probably darker. That's a nice color. It'll work really well for oceans. And my beach in a bottle. And here we go. Let's get it in there. Add some water and pull it out to its light color. There you go. That's eight. And of course, you know, I swatched in eight and the packs come in nine. <laughs> uh, because that's just how the world works, right? So there's some, some red going into your crimson, purples. And there's some blue. And let's put the last one here ultramarine ultramarine deep ultramarine deep which is uh i don't know sometimes i've seen this as almost like a purple blue um just depends from brand to brand you can't rely on the name that's what that's really a lot of the lesson you have to rely on the pigment color numbers see so this is not this kind of deep blue. I don't know. You know, I'm kind of colorblind, so to me, in my head, I look at this as a cool blue or maybe something that has some purple. That's it in its solid stage. So, with being a little colorblind, I've always been dependent on the name of a color. I acrylic paint. I've been an acrylic painter for years. But I've gotten to know my paint, so 
I know it by its name. And by its name, then I could classify whether it was warm or cool. So I need to put the warm colors together and the cool colors together. And now as watercolor and brand to brand, I've learned that the name doesn't really mean anything. They try to kind of keep it the same, you know, with the same pigments, but in our reality, you have to look at the pigment and the pigment will tell you the, the color that you're working with. Okay, so this is uh, Ultramarine Deep. That's the first nine in the set. There's no way we can do all 36 in one video. Um, it burned my phone battery probably. That's the first nine. But you okay, so just so you know what I do with these cards, I would take this one. Mm -hmm. Good job, but you should mix them up. Good thing I know what they are. Okay, the first one is Rose Matter. Here we go. Rose Matter. So I would write Rose Matter here. And this is um, Mission Gold. And I can't put MG because I use M gram. So I have to, I have to write Magello. So it's Magello Mission Gold. And then at the bottom, what I would have to know is the pigment number. So this is PR176. So that's a red at 176. So now I can go through my other brands and I could see if their rose matter was you know 150 um 108 or what or a combination of other colors. And once you start figuring that part out, um that's where you can figure out if something is darker, lighter, if if aside from you know looking at it. Um, so yes, there's a scientific way for this. Um, my hat's off to anyone who makes their own watercolor because we thought about getting into making our own watercolors. Um, and it might still happen, but right now, um, I would like to spend my time painting instead of producing you know, chemistry sets in my kitchen. So we'll see. But I think as you start to learn a little more about your paints, um, you start dreaming of things like that, the ability to create your own paint and create your own colors and create your own combinations. So I write these this way, Bright Opera. Again, I put the brand here in the corner. The bottom for my info, um, sometimes I'll put this, the order number, but you know, that's for the the brand but you know I don't think it's as necessary as this like this one is BV 10 that's a pigment along with PR 122 so that's how I um, label my cards I'll do one more and I won't have you subjected to watching this anymore <laughs> again sometimes you have to turn the tubes um, not all tubes have theirs listed very easily or um, in very legible spots reputable tubes will um, definitely have this now some people put all that other stuff light fastness, semi-transparent and all that. You can kind of see if it's transparent or not just by going over your line. I can see it's semi-transparent because I can kind of see the line, but it's not as clear as a true transparent color. And light fastness, um, I do worry about it with selling um, paintings, but I don't worry about it on, the, on these cards. I worry about it when I'm buying it. All right, so these are the first nine of the Magello Mission Gold watercolor paints from that 36 set. Okay, let's 
call it here and of course you see this palette now i have to clean this right to do another nine i have so many dirty palettes because cleaning palettes is not the fun part of watercolor painting making the mess is the part of watercolor painting that's fun right <laughs> okay so i'm going to close that there and then i will reset everything again and then i'll come back and let's do another nine and see how that goes all right that's the first first set of nine for color for color um, comparisons and give you an idea of what they look like. All right, bye, I'll be right back.